Hey, John Bullard here. Thanks for dropping in for lesson number two. I thought it would be a good idea to work on another short and fairly easy piece rather than moving into left hand technique and scales just yet. It's good to have some short pieces that you can learn in their entirety and you can play all the way through and you can get fairly good at and they sort of boost your morale and give you a little energy to move forward into the more difficult stuff. So that's what we'll be doing today is working on another short, fairly easy piece. The piece that I've got for today's lesson is called Waltz, and it's by Ferdinando Carulli. He was an early classical guitar composer and player. He was born in 1770 and died in 1841. Um, and he wrote a lot of guitar studies and guitar etudes. And this piece falls in that category. Uh, even though it's called waltz, it's really meant to be a study or an etude, which means a fairly easy piece um, that works on maybe one aspect of your playing. I first heard this Karuli piece through the playing of my former banjo teacher, Fred Boyce. Fred was the first banjo player that I ever heard play any classical music on a banjo. and He was a big inspiration for me. Um, Fred played this piece with more of a jig feel than your standard waltz feel. And I really like that, and that's how I approach the piece. So full disclosure here, and my apologies to Mr. Carulli, but I have taken some artistic liberties with this piece. Um, I have chopped off um, several sections uh, towards the end of the piece um, and made it a little bit shorter. Um, to me, those sections of the piece got to be sort of monotonous, um, and it makes for a better piece, in my opinion, to to stop it where I have it. Um, and it lends itself a little better to the banjo that way as well. Also, this piece was originally written in the key of A, but to be a fairly easy study um, or an etude, I moved it to the key of C. Um, and on the guitar, you have an open A string, which makes it fairly easy there, but on the banjo, uh, that's not the way the key of A would work. So I, I lower my fourth string down to C, which is a standard tuning uh, for, say, the classic finger style or a lot of, a lot of bluegrass tunes. Um, so the tuning for this piece is C, G, B, D, and G. So this piece by Carulli is in three sections. It's got an A section, a B section, and a C section. Now, the A section is repeated twice. The B section is repeated, but since there's actually a variation in the second half of the B section, it's played all the way through without repeat marks. And then the C section is played twice through and does use repeat marks. So let's take a look at section A from this piece. Um, the melody, the top voice of the A section goes like this. If you'll notice, when it does repeat, there's a pickup note. Now, um, I added these pickup notes. Um, they weren't in the original piece. I, I guess I should have mentioned that earlier. Uh, more artistic license taken by me. But the pickup note really gives it some energy and gives it that more lively jig type feel. And that's the way I play this piece. Um, so again, apologies to Mr. Carulli. But I'll play the A section melody through um, twice and, I, and when I repeat it, I'm going to use the pickup note, so you'll be able to hear that. So check this out. So let's look at what the bottom voice is doing in the A section. The bottom voice or the bass line is doing this. Now that's, that G could be played on the third string theoretically, but I like to keep the G on the fourth string because that keeps the whole bass line on the fourth string and it gives good continuity uh, to the line and um, you can hear the lines consistency better if it stays on 
one string rather than jumping from string to string. That's something I try to do a lot in the, these classical arrangements is if, if a line starts on one string, you know, I try, especially sort of a bass line, I try to keep it on that same string as long as possible. It gives continuity to that line and lets the ear perceive it as an ongoing line. Instead of jumping from string to string, that sort of breaks the continuity. So again, the bottom voice in the A section, which was uh, on the fourth string, goes like this. So I'm going to put the two voices together and play the A, a section twice through using the pickup note when I repeat it. So for the B section, we would have used uh, a pickup note from the last measure of the A section to get into it. But the B section really is a short figure um, using the C chord and a G7 chord. Uh, it goes like this. Um, actually G, C, and G7. Um, but what makes this part tricky is it has a pedal tone. The bass line in this section is actually what's called a pedal tone or a repeated note. Um, in this case, it's G. And in the first half of the B section, it's the third string open G. So you, so you end up with this kind of thing. voices doing that sort of thing the the bottom voice is just going on the second and third beats of each measure so let me play the first half of the B section again very slowly And now the second half of the B section is the same thing basically, but the pedal tone or the repeated tone moves from the third string up an octave to the fifth string G. So it's kind of the same thing with the pedal moved up. So let me play that. This would be the second half of the B section. Now I want to put all of the B section together. It's really the same theme repeated twice, but the pedal tone moves from the third string to the fifth string. So um, this is the entire B section, and I'll include the pickups leading in to and going out. into the C section. Um, I'm going to give you a look at my right hand up close and how I play this. Um, so look at the fingering for the right hand and then let's look at that very close and you can follow along and see what I'm doing. So here's a closer look at the, the B section which can be a little tricky for the right hand. Um, so I'm going to play it very slowly just the first half of the B section where the pedal tone is on the third string open. And I have all the fingering marked on the PDF, your right hand fingering. So uh, let me play it very slowly. Starts with a pickup note. Let me do that.
that again. This is just the first half of the B section, starting with a pickup leading into it. Now what I would do for that is I would just take that first half and work on that alone with a metronome. Let's see if I can give you an example. So there's, hopefully you can hear that metronome click and it's, it's beating in triplets because basically we have a triplet rhythm here. So I would practice this very slowly and precisely to get the right hand locked in, just like this, starting again with the pickup. So I would just sort of loop that first half of the B section, kind of loop it together as one exercise and play it over and over, just like that. So let's look at the, let's look at the second half of the, the B section, which is, uses the same chords as the first half, which is uh, G, C, G7, back to C. And those are the first two strings played with the, the index and middle. And we're just switching our pedal tone, which is a G, to the fifth string. And we're going to hit that every time with the thumb. So very slowly it looks like. And actually, we lead into that with a pickup note, um, which was on the third string, so it would look like. So again, you could get the metronome out and just work on this second half of the B section. Once you've got each half together, then go ahead and put them together as the entire B section, which would sound like this one time through. So that should clear up any confusion about the right hand during the B section. This is really the hardest part of this tune, is getting the right hand fingering in the B section. So I hope that helps. So now we're at the C section, the final section of the piece. Let's look at what the top voice or the melody is doing. And one thing to bear in mind is in this last section, the first beat of every measure is being, being taken up by the bass line. So the melody is offset to just the second and third beats. So it sounds a little bit staggered, but here's what the top voice is doing. So I'm catching the C at the 10th fret with my pinky 
and then the B at the ninth fret with my third finger. And then I'm coming down and catching the A at the seventh fret with my pinky again. Then there's a G after that with the thumb on the fifth string. And that puts me in a good position for the next note, which is an F at the sixth fret. And then I'm right in line for an E at the fifth fret. And then that section kind of repeats, and then we end up back down here at our C position. So let me play that one more time, just the top voice. Okay, so let's look at what the bass line is doing here in the last section, or the C section. The bass line is going to be played entirely on the fourth string, and as I mentioned previously, I like to, to keep uh, various melodic lines or bass lines on, a, on the same string as much as possible because it gives continuity to that, that line. Um, so again here when I have a G, I'm, I'm actually going to be playing it on the seventh fret. Instead of playing the third fret open, I'm playing the seventh fret on the fourth string. Um, so here's what the bass line in the C section sounds like by itself. So now let me put uh, the C section all together with both voices. I'll play it slowly, and I'm going to start it with a pickup note that would be at the end of the, the B section, and then I'm going to use the pickup note at the repeat of the C section, so you can see how that works. So you want to concentrate on trying to hear both voices in the C section. You want to hear a clear bass line, but you also want to hear the melody sustaining as much as possible, and that's kind of the tricky part here. Um, just really focus on trying to uh, hold these melody notes as long as possible, even though you've got to jump down to shift. It's kind of a, a hard thing to do, but that's, that's what we work on. So let me play that one more time, the C section repeated twice, um, both voices. So one thing to keep in mind uh, while you're playing this piece is that you want to be able to hear both voices somewhat independently. Um, and you also want to be able to use some dynamic phrasing like what we talked about in the first lesson. Um, so for example, in the A section, you could start out uh, fairly loud and then maybe be quiet on the second, the repeat, but you want to still hear that bass line. also experiment with right hand positioning um, where you can move closer to the bridge for brightness and closer to the neck for a mellow sound, so something like this. So you don't want to let one voice really override the other. Um, notice that you can hear the bass line plugging along and you can also clearly hear the melody. Um, not so much of an issue in the B section because the bass line is really turns into that pedal. <laughs> So the voices are sort of separated automatically there, but you want to kind of strive for some melodic flow to the, the top voice. Um, 
you could experiment with stopping it a little bit like uh, which would be you know a little more staccato for that top line um, and then what I like to do is when the B section repeats and the pedal note moves to the fifth string I like to get a little bit more quiet there and then build back up through that repeat. So I'll, I'll play the B section sort of like that. And then on to the C section. So for the last section, you want to make sure that you hear both voices clearly. Uh, it's really important to hear that bass line in the last section because the bass line now being on the first beat is propelling uh, the top voice forward. Um, so you want to make sure you hear the bass line strong with the thumb, but you also want to clearly hear the top voice. Uh, let me play an example of that. Now I know a tendency that I have in that section is to cheat these, these top voice notes too much. In other words, cut them off too short because I'm trying to move down to a different position. And that ends up sounding not very, doesn't sound very good. I'll give you an example, an extreme example would be like. See how that begins to sound really choppy. So the trick is to hang on to these melody lines in the top and let them ring as long as you can before you have to shift and also be keeping the bass line going. So it's a, it's a little tricky there, but let me try to play that again. So I'll go ahead and play the, the piece in its entirety with the repeats and the pickup notes and everything and try to throw in some um, dynamic variation and try to accomplish the things that I described. Uh, can't make any promises, but um, hopefully you can get some ideas from that as well. Mm -hmm. 